So good afternoon, uh, everyone. Uh, on behalf of our team, the APTC team, I'll be presenting the background and rationality behind the theme for this year's TPRM hashtag Close the Gap, Accelerate Post-Pandemic Recovery Through Social Justice. So it was initially thought that the COVID-19 pandemic uh, could have uh, been a great uh, equalizer given the expansiveness of its effects and the effects are actually cutting across sectors. Uh, we can see that everyone and anyone, regardless of their background and socioeconomic status, can potentially contract the virus. But is it really a great equalizer? Apparently not, no, because uh, present and emerging uh, data and studies have shown that the effects of the pandemic are hardly the same and in actuality quite disproportionate at the expense of disadvantaged uh, groups. What we see is that the pandemic actually exacerbated the already long-standing inequities in society. Uh, for instance, poverty incidents among the population in the Philippines increased from 16.7% in 2018 to 18.1% in 2021, which erased the significant improvements in poverty reduction before the pandemic. Looking at the poverty incidence by region, it's in the, side, like in the left uh, graph, we see that more than half of these regions showed a rise in poverty incidence. And in the right graph, you can see that in general, that the most affected are the poor, as a larger proportion of the poor had reported experiencing reduced income compared to the richer groups. Now, in the labor market, unemployment rates climbed to unprecedented levels in 2020, the first year of the pandemic, and this can be uh, observed uh, across all regions. Unemployment rates somehow improved in 2021, but this had not gone back yet to pre-pandemic levels. Uh, and we can see that the unemployment rates were still quite high in regions like NCR, Calabarzon, and Barm. However, the impact was more severe among the poor. Uh, we can see that a larger proportion of the poor were not able to work as usual, and only a small proportion of them were able to work from home. This means that during the height of the pandemic, the poor workers were more at risk of losing their jobs and of being infected by the COVID-19 virus. In the education front, uh, an education crisis has already been looming in the country even before the pandemic as 9 out of 10 Filipino children struggle to read simple texts. The crisis has been worsened by the pandemic and the impact was again more severe among the poor. We can see from the right uh, graph that based on 2020 data, uh, there was a much larger share of children not attending school among the poorest quintile compared to the richest quintile, and this can be observed in nearly all regions. The gap between the poorest and the richest quintiles were quite wide in almost all Mindanao regions. Health-wise, the pandemic made accessing healthcare harder, especially among the poor. Uh, in 2020, 40% of uh, the poorest Filipinos' health needs were unmet, compared to the 16% for their richest counterparts. Also, 62% of Filipino households experienced moderate to severe food insecurity, which was felt mostly by the poor. We argue that these uh, disparities in human capital outcomes are associated with structural drivers like income inequality, poor working, living, and learning conditions, and eroding democratic institutions and political pr uh, processes that persisted even before the pandemic. Now, for one, income inequality has been a long-standing problem of the Philippines. Uh, the GD coefficient, which is uh, a measure of income inequality, is the highest in the Philippines among the ASEAN's largest economies. There is growing empirical research that finds that income inequality is a major determinant of health rather than the GDP per capita or average income. So moreover, an equal society is important for social cohesion and economic uh, mobility. So therefore, income inequality is linked to poor health and well-being outcomes, lower social mobility, and weak social cohesion. Disadvantaged segments of the population are also subject to precarious working conditions, poor living conditions, and inferior learning conditions. For example, informal workers have poor access, if any, to social and labor protection. They also have limited protection against work-related injuries. 
And then poor health outcomes like low infant uh, survival are more prevalent in areas which do not have adequate water and sanitation facilities. Poor li living conditions like in the form of crowding and poor air quality increase the risk of getting infectious diseases and the spread of the COVID-19 virus. Students from low-income households and marginalized groups have limited access to high-quality education, technology, and other infrastructure needed for learning. So the severe and disproportionate impacts of the COVID-19 pandemic reflect the deep-seated structural inequalities and inequities in society. So we want to emphasize that it's important to make social justice the front and center of the post-pandemic recovery plan. But what's social justice? According to Rawls, at its core, social justice is assuring the protection of equal access to liberties, rights, and opportunities, as well as taking care of the least advantaged members of society. Uh, in the Philippines, it's not a new concept. No? It's social justice is already embedded in the 1987 Constitution, and it frames the promotion of social justice as a commitment to creating equitable uh, opportunities, reducing social, economic, and political inequalities, and removing cultural inequities. So just a short background, no? social justice is underpinned by uh, five key pillars. So equal opportunity to access resources, voice, wherein everyone can participate in the decision-making process, diversity, such that discriminatory practices are prohibited, human rights and equity, such that the needs of specific groups are addressed to ensure similar outcomes as the general population. In this year's DPRM, we identify three broad sectors where social injustice largely manifests. So public health infrastructure, education and labor and environment. When it comes to health, uh, large disparities in health outcomes uh, have persisted in the Philippines. The infant mortality rates in wealthier regions like NCR and Calabarzon were similar to most upper middle income countries, while the infant mortality rate in BARM was comparable to that of the poorest countries. Infant and child mortality rates also show a large, dispropor uh, large disparity across socioeconomic uh, groups. So we can see in the right graph you know, where mortality rates are found to be highest among the poorest groups. For instance, the infant mortality rate in the poorest skin tile is higher by five times compared to the richest skin tile. Unequal access to essential uh, healthcare services uh, hinders the significant improvements in health outcomes. Now, first, health facilities in the Philippines are concentrated in relatively rich local governments. Second, uh, the number of healthcare workers, including doctors, nurses, and allied health professionals, has increased in the past decades. But most healthcare workers are concentrated in rich provinces and cities. Human resources in the health sector remain a major constraint in poor and remote provinces. A third, out-of-pocket spending is still a significant source of healthcare financing, which is widely discouraged because it limits healthcare access, especially for the poor. There is lack of incomprehensive benefit package and it tends to be curative focus. So to achieve a social justice in health, uh, the implementation of universal health healthcare should be strengthened and this entails genuinely expanding population co coverage, expanding health benefits to include primary care, and increasing support value and financial protection. Moreover, the allocation of subsidies to local governments should be made equitable, and the social determinants of health, uh, such as living conditions, are addressed. In terms of uh, education, the disparities in education outcomes reveal a differential access to quality education, and these disparities are again have been exacerbated by the pandemic. Uh, the learning and earning losses you know, from school closures to in-person learning or face-to-face -face classes are projected by existing studies to be larger for the disadvantaged students. Uh, as we can see in the right graph, no. Uh, existing proje projections show that the gap in learning and earning losses between the poorest and the richest uh, quintile is also expected to widen as the efficacy of remote learning increases. This is because students from low-income ho households tend to have no 
or limited access to the internet, effective learning resources such as gadgets, and sufficient support for remote learning. The thing is, education is critical for ensuring access to decent work and for social mobility. So inequities in access to quality education, as well as in lifelong learning and other training, lead to differential opportunities for obtaining decent work. However, no one challenge in obtaining decent uh, work in the Philippines is the extent of the informal sector. So the uh, informality is prevalent in the labor market, which is usually associated with low wages and limited job security and social protection. We see informal employment had been declining in the past year, so as we can see in the graph, but there appears to be an uptick of informal employment during the pandemic. The shocks to the economy and the labor market due to the pandemic resulted in massive job losses, which severely affected individuals who do not have access to social protection, including informal workers. And then the acceleration of digitalization of our work during the pandemic led to the creation of high quality jobs, but it also contributed to the growing informality of work. So in turn, this raises the concern about increasing inequality, rising informality, and widening gaps on social protection. So from a social justice uh, perspective, quality education involves three dimensions. So first is inclusion, meaning access to quality education and opportunities for realizing learning outcomes. Second is relevance, which is connected to how meaningful learning outcomes are. And democracy, which involves participation in decisions about educational quality. So in the labor market front, the formalization of work and the expansion of social protection schemes can foster the advancement of decent work and its opportunities. Now, when it comes to environment concerns, uh, the Philippines has always been highly exposed to disaster risks like uh, geological, hydrometeorological, and man-induced hazards. Uh, this includes exposure to cyclones, earthquakes, volcanic eruptions, terrorism, and more recently, the COVID-19 pandemic. So globally, the Philippines is recognized as one of the countries prone to uh, disaster risk and hazards. Uh, the INFORM uh, Risk Index, which is a risk assessment for humanitarian crisis and disasters, ranked the Philippines in 2022 as a top one for vulnerability to natural disasters. And then last year, the Philippines was the fourth in the global risk index. It is therefore important to strengthen community resilience, which is the core of the climate change and disaster risk reduction and management policy. So these are the thematic areas no, for environment. So on disaster risk and climate change, the poor and the marginalized are the most vulnerable. And unfortunately, there is limited bottom-up uh, representation from marginalized, uh, for marginalized communities and non-government sectors. There are also huge disparities when it comes to allocation of uh, resources in which it's the richest uh, LGUs who are getting more resources. On the legal adjudication processes, the Philippines ranks high in terms of related deaths and environmental cases globally. And there's a lot of environmental cases that stretch for long periods of time because of the slow processes in the country's judici judiciary system. On ancestral domains and urban green spaces, the political structures of indigenous peoples and indigenous cultural communities and the consent processes in ancestral domains are seen to be in compromise. We also sh see shrinking urban green spaces that are in turn needed uh, to combat rising heat indices and island effects. On mineral extraction and environmental justice, the welfare of indigenous peoples and host mining community is also seen to be compromised and there is an inequitable distribution of costs and benefits from extra extractive industries like mining. So to achieve social justice in the environment front, first, increase investments on climate smart and green infrastructure across sectors, including agriculture. Second, mainstream tenets of environment and climate justice and economic development blueprints. Third, empower marginalized groups and strengthen community representations in institutional decision-making platforms. Fourth, improve national and subnational planning and fiscal management for climate change and DRRM. Fifth, maintain and strengthen transparency and accountability mechanisms in development projects, including extractive industries.
So this is the end of our presentation for the background paper of the APTC team. Thank you very much for listening.